Lost in Shoe Pick, Book One, An Exercise in Nonsense, a novel by Troy Tabor. What if all of the folklore elements your grandfather spoke of actually were? What if there was only a paper thin separation of less than one degree? Who would save you? How would you survive? Chapter One Puppies. From a rib and a handful of clay did the Almighty give shape to the fairer sex. With hair taken from the daughters of Eve, he wove, for man, a loyal friend. The Memoirs of Emil. The storm continued to force its displeasure upon the land as the farmer anxiously peered through a boarded window. Years of experience gave him enough insight to create a viewpoint in each wooden shutter. It was one thing to be locked in and quite another to be fully removed from the outside. Each peephole afforded a tiny vantage point on the condition of his farm. The old man cupped weathered hands against the window pane and placed his face within their frame to block the glare from a patiently burning kerosene lantern. Lightning snaked its way across the night sky. The branches of each strike resembled the roots of his crops growing among the furrowed rows that now lay flooded. Each blinding flash granted him a brief still-life scene. They were deep into a second night of destruction. The storm continued to ravage the plantation like a child wielding the might of Thor's hammer. Wailing forces announced door intent as the hurricane lay flat the tidy rows of sugarcane. Storms of this magnitude were a South Louisiana farmer's greatest foe. Another difficult year faced him. How could anything survive after the tempest's raising? The most one could do was pray. Still, he remained grateful for the safekeeping of all in his home. They had enough food and water to tide them over for the next two weeks, and by the grace of all that is holy, the farmer's buildings were all intact. That much the ragged observer discerned between the stark flaring of lightning strikes. The wind suddenly appeared to be losing intensity. Their banshee howling slowed to a low moan. That meant only one thing, a halfway point. At least the worst had passed but golf storms do not give up without a fight. Maybe there would be enough time to dash into the barn and gather the dogs. Sandy must have had her litter by now. The headstrong mother chose a place to birth the puppies and nothing, not even a hurricane, could change her mind. That trait made her pups valuable through the years, but damn the stubbornness of that dog. A final lightning strike reached outward from the storm's wall with fully extended fingers. It lashed out, aimed for the farm's largest structure, the menacing claws released its rabid temper onto the tin roof of the barn with enough fury to sink a fleet of ships. The farmer held his breath so as not to fog up the glass, and to his amazement, a soft blue glow lit the entire structure and encased the barn. A luminous, marbled blue light claimed dominion over the site, alive with ebb and flow, a sea within a storm. It crashed upon itself. It defied all logic with its existence, crackling in the air as it ushered in a song of birth. The farmer continued to hold his breath while inwardly he recited a prayer, and to his ears came the sounds of children singing, singing a joyous harmony, multi-layered and composed, singing a sound that he would carry with him for the remainder of his days, a song filled with humanity, sung in perfect key, sung in a dialect so sublime that it caused tears to fall from the sky. The barn was the oldest structure on Dixie Plantation, and it held fast against the onslaught of turbulent winds. Its mighty wooden doors barred all intruders. A large male chocolate Labrador retriever paced behind the doors. Bullet. The farm's eldest dog never gave thought to the subject of worry, but today he had good reason. In the far corner, under the combine, lay his dame and six newborn puppies. Puppies should be brought into the world where they can hear the wind and smell the earth, Sandy said. She pleaded with him to let the pups begin their journey in the barn. I am called to this spot. It is our home. Sandy was a honey-colored hound with sharp pointed ears and a high forehead. A youthful symmetrical elegance hinted at her lineage which ran through the hounds of Arimathea. Years ago, Bullet was lucky enough to win the Northern Beauty's heart. Now she struggled to give birth to the last of their litter. For hours she labored on the final unborn pup. The first six were dry, fed, and sleeping. Panting, thirsty, her legs trembled but the appointed time had yet to arrive. Sparked by the oddness of the litter spacing, Bullet recalled his sire's parting words. In his lineage, 
it was customary for a father to bestow upon a puppy a sentiment for the future on the day of his leaving. Prior to this one, every litter he sired had an even number of puppies. Seven, a lucky number, distinctive in the annals of men and dogs alike. Seven, a prime which stands firm upon a solid base. In stature, it is braced by the past but forges toward the future. Not the middle of ten, but close enough to be held in its court. Melody pervaded his senses whenever he recalled his father's impart. In his hands did hold a cup from which we bowed to drink. For all his years, the chocolate Labrador pondered a solution to the riddle embedded in his father's parting oration. There has never been a seventh in my line, thought the hound. Still, he paced and reached the juncture where the two doors met. He could feel the storm beginning to calm. He heard the winds release their grip on the plantation. Bullet! The helplessness of the call pulled him back from his journey through memory. Bullet! Come see! Sandy called. I can no longer push! The final birth began to transpire, but the lengthy labor demanded payment. Sandy drifted, too weak to expel the languid prodigy. Bullet arrived at her side. The head emerged, but the puppy stalled, lodged in the birth canal. In addition to his apparent disregard for timing, the latecomer appeared to be quite larger than his siblings. Bullet reached down and clamped his teeth on the amniotic sac that surrounded the puppy. He pulled, slowly, steadily, forcefully. For an instant, nothing happened. Sandy took a deep breath and bore down with all the strength she could gather. Howling, she started the final push, and a blue glow began to encompass the barn, touching all within. The amniotic sac burst. Fluid ran across the straw-laden floor and the last of their brood. The seventh puppy entered into an eager world. He wiggled under the cleansing tongue of his father. A cold puppy is a sick puppy. It is the refrain to a mother's birthing song. The resonance of the tune hung in the air. Bullet heard the song many times before, but he had not been allowed to participate in a birth until today. Sandy could barely resist the urge to sleep, but the source of her exhaustion needed attention. At first, her eyes ran blurry, then regained focus to reveal a wobbly yellow furball. One son out of seven puppies. Slowly, she turned toward her mate. My mother had a saying, six is a matter of good fortune, but seven is a blessing. Sandy swallowed. Her tongue found no relief. A favored son. That is what my mother would say. She would promptly name him. Sandy let a moment slip by. She whispered, for sleep began to slip its way into her fur. Bullet, would you... I have named the preceding six. Bullet found the words difficult to absorb. Within the code of Labradors, it is the female's right to name her litter. The birth is due to your assistance. A gift must never go unpaid, Sandy whispered. Bullet sat, front legs extended while his hind legs remained tucked under him. From such a vantage point, he could get a better look at the somnolent furball. Naming. A serious affair. Mothers claim that titles come to them at various times. In dreams, through lineage, during hardship or elation, even at the death of a loved one. They also claim that at certain points the wind would carry a name and recite it to them, thus giving form to the preordained. Bullet yearned to give his son a worthy title that would do him justice. He stared intently at the pup and fervently attempted to condense the months of a mother's connection to an infant into several seconds. The newborn's fur perfectly matched Sandy's coat. His tail, oddly enough, did not seem to end, coiling around him, an endless knot. Regardless, he would strike a handsome figure when fully grown. What is your name? Bullet asked the languid whelp. The wobbly puppy sluggishly lifted its head and turned toward his sire. The puppy barked four high-pitched yelps to gather attention. Its head tilted slightly to one side, and its eyes opened. Bullet drew a raspy breath as the impact caught him, and he reared back on strong hind legs like a knight stallion. Frantically, Bullet pawed the air, but he was unable to break the piercing stare of his son's eyes. Unable to draw breath, the attachment held him. Green, crystalline, spiraling, a windstorm of emerald churned to mirror the tempest beyond the stout barn doors. Green, a color rare in the line of Labradors. Green, a color laced with life. Green is the chameleon brandishing stealth and loyalty. Green, 
It becomes a cannonade of chlorophyll bursting under the influence of light. Without warning, Bullet felt golden arrows align the key points of his life with his father's prophecy. I almost forgot. Sandy, my love, you once informed me at our first meeting of how your lineage runs through the hounds of Arimathea. Tell me, how close does the line pass? Sandy averted her eyes from her mate. She spoke in a hushed tone. The line runs through the center of my lineage. At the time, when we first met, you were without rival, the strongest. Even now there are none your equal. There were many for you to choose from. I did not want to appear boastful. Bullet looked towards the rafters of the barn where a matrix of blue filaments lit across the corrugated tin roof. A fire that rages, but we do not burn, he sighed in trance. As the legends decree, by the ghost of Balto, our son is born in the eye of the storm and embraced by light. He is one in seven, but he is more... Bullet! Sandy screamed. Name him! Name him before the fire fades! Bullet tossed his head and withdrew from his stupor. My son shall be called after the feathered oracles of New Zealand and the fruit that shares their name. The path has been dimmed since the passing of Balto. One in every hundred years. To the world he shall be named Kiwi. For the light shall have need of a name for its centurion. <laughs>